So in this case, we are going to look into the requirements that are needed as we are going to be working on our module two uh, that is uh, working with the brakes. So it's another uh, chapter that we are actually going to focus on. But uh, as an individual, you need to be careful uh, in terms of the formulas that you're going to work with. So those ones, we're going to list them later on. But uh, in this case, we just need to know the basic view of what exactly we are going to be working with. So as we have got our breaks uh, from the clutches that we had in our previous uh, classes that we are doing, uh, in this module, you need to explain the basic principle of brakes. You must also be able to list the design elements that are applied in brake design. And also to list and explain two types of bend brakes. So we are going to focus much uh, into calculations later on but uh, as we have got our bend breaks also we're going to talk about these where we have got uh, the first part which we refer to as the simple we have got the simple uh, bend breaks and also the differential is uh, considered here uh, the differential all right uh, bend break so as we can see, uh, these are bend breaks. So it also depends, uh, guys, with the source or the textbooks that you're working with, um, how they list those ones. But this uh, simple and what differential. Then as an individual, just to know how to draw a labeled diagram that shows the theory applicable to flat belt drives and centrifugal forces, guys, you are just big when you're dealing with the flat build drives, guys. We are big to our end for. So I want you also as an individual to refer back to your end for mechano build drives. So I want us to go through that. Make sure you understand all the formulas that we listed there. All right, the relationship between the tension, effective force, uh, calculation of power, those calculation for torque, all those. Make sure that you know. All right, so it's going to help you uh, to understand this topic. And on those calculations, uh, make sure that you go through how to calculate tension ratio, uh, the torque ratio, moments, power, vertical components, number of revolutions, time, angular velocity, work done, minimum coefficient of friction. So as you can see, uh, these are part of the calculations that we are going to also need. So guys, revise your info. Also, your engineering science uh, can also help for these formulas because it's just going to be a repetition, guys. One or two things that we need. The rest is just your basics. Engineering science, we're going to need it uh, in the calculation of these vertical components, right? You need your science basics and also moments. Application of these moments, clockwise moments is equal to what? Anticlockwise, all those uh, go back to your N3, N4, uh, engineering science. All right, so then we're going to continue this part. Uh, they need also, they want you to, Define, explain the application of block breaks. So it's another type of breaks. So remember, we talked about the bend. So this one is now block breaks. Calculate all these as we are dealing with what? The block breaks. Okay. Then after that, you're supposed to describe bend and block breaks. This one is a combined type. So in actual sense, we are saying in terms of the types, we have got three types as we, uh, as we have seen. We have got the bend, breaks, separated. All right, that's the first type. 
Then we have got the block. All right, it's another type. And then the third one, it's a combination of these. So you can say block and bend. You can say bend and block. It's up to you, the way that you understand. So I'm just going to call it bend and block. Combined like this. Uh, it's another type of the bricks. So guys, that is what we are going to need, these three types. Uh, those are the ones that are being explained here, if you can see. Here we talked about the bend. Here we talked about the block. And now here we are talking about what? Bend and block. So we need to explain uh, differently and explain the structure of a flexible steel bend with the diagram of a labeled uh, with the aid of a labeled diagram, all right? Then calculate the tight side bend tension, slack side bend tension. As, as I was talking about, guys, as long as you deal with your belt drives, you know that there is T1 and T2, the tight side and the slack side, all those tension ratio, uh, you are supposed to be uh, knowing those once you go through your N4. All right, so I want you to go through that also calculating of these, uh, which is the major part of our N6, this one. Yeah, that is where maybe you can just relate to N6, whatever that I will explain later on. Uh, and also here, one or two, but uh, mostly here, uh, it's your N3, N4 signs that you just need here, all right, on this part. So as you can see, uh, N6, as I told you, it does not mean you relate to N6 only. It's a referral to what you've done before. So let's go back, guys, to our N4 and to refer back to our belt drives. All right. Then uh, as a general view or as general introduction of the brakes, a brake is designed to slow or stop a moving object. So by that alone, to say we need to slow, there is a movement already. So we are actually slowing down. Or we need to come to an end where we have to stop. So if that is the consideration, uh, me guys, I'm 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 into calculations. So these theory guys, you do them uh, on your on your pace so that we don't have a lot of issues in these explanations. But bringing this to mathematical view so that we can understand each other later on when we are to do calculations. We are saying a break is designed to slow or stop. Okay, let's go back to our mathematical view, again, like I was saying, where we understand that in terms of the speed, speed can be taken initially uh, where we have got uh, omega 1 as our initial speed, omega 2 as our final speed. We've got our time, we've got our displacement, and we have got the angular acceleration. Remember this uh, from our science also, we talked about this. So the angular acceleration in our case, yeah, I'm worried about here. Yeah. This is my major part. Is we are working with the brakes because the brakes are designed to slow or to stop a moving object. So when a moving object, let's say we've got a moving object, it is increasing the speed. Let's say the object is initially at this point and it is increasing the speed. This is the object. It is going up, right? This is what is happening. There is an acceleration there. When there is no acceleration, when the speed is constant, we understand it to be like this. Speed is what? Constant. Then we talk about this condition, this one. To slow or to stop. So if the speed is being slowed, now we are slowing down. It means there is a deceleration. And this is the part that I want you to see here. The part where the brakes are playing a role. This is where the brakes are now applied. 
So if the brakes are being applied, we are going to notice a reduction in speed. Yeah, a reduction. There's going to be a reduction in speed, meaning to say there is a deceleration. The object is decelerating until it comes to rest. Until it comes to rest, until a point where it stops. This is the condition that we are working with here. The brakes are being applied. So this is the braking uh, part, the brakes part here. So this consideration, when the brakes are being applied, it's a deceleration. So whenever we are dealing with the brakes, guys, let us know that we are dealing with what? With a deceleration. They are meant to reduce the speed. Whether the object is going to stop, but there is a what? A reduction in terms of the speed. And that reduction in terms of the speed generally shows us that there is a negative in terms of what? Uh, our acceleration. Deceleration means a negative acceleration. So whenever we are going to do our calculations, let us know that uh, the, the acceleration that we use will be taken as a negative. The reason why I'm saying this is because some of your textbook guys, they change formulas that you are used to just to, 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 uh, to accommodate this topic. Not following the right thing. The right thing is just acceleration. If whenever you're using it, it's supposed to be what? Used as a negative. Yeah. So you'll find now your textbooks trying to change the formulas where now, so uh, guys, I want you to know your formulas is there. If you know that uh, final speed is equivalent or when you're dealing with uh, the, the angular speed, all right, is equivalent to what? Omega 1 plus alpha t like this. This is what you're used to. You can manipulate to find whatever that you want. Is it time? Whatever that you want. If it is time, it's going to be omega 2 minus omega 1 over this uh, angular acceleration. It gives us what? T. So you find now your textbooks, they now start with omega 1 minus omega 2 because they are avoiding this to be used as a negative. So if you understand that, ah, guys, it's up to you. It's fine. I'm going to elab elaborate more um, when we are doing the calculations, but uh, I think it can make sense when I'm explaining that uh, later on. I think uh, it's going to help us from this understanding. All right, so this is the purpose of the brakes, guys. As long as you're dealing with brakes, it's all about the reduction of speed. And um, like I said, belt drives, uh, um, formulas are needed. So that is it. Usually brakes are used to stop rotating objects, uh, object in a machine such as a pulley. Once you deal with a pulley, guys, that's where we now consider those uh, belt drives, okay? or a vehicle such as a wheel, all right? So basic principle of brakes, I want you to go through this part as an individual. The function of a brake is to bring moving mass to rest by absorbing energy from it. This is usually achieved by means of what? Friction. So once there's friction, we know that there's going to be frictional force and we're going to be talking about the coefficient of friction and we're going to be talking about the normal force. All those, they have to be considered. So we will see them guys later on. Uh, so then uh, uh, also go through this part, guys, as an individual. It can help you. Uh, the design elements applied in brake design. Yes, I want you also to go through this part as an individual. Okay, just make sure that you go through your theory, guys. But this theory, guys, is up to you. Uh, understand. Uh, it's all your understanding there. All right, so I wanted us to, to focus about this one. When a brake is in use, it loses energy due to friction. The kinetic energy of the moving object converts to, terminal, uh, to thermal energy when the brake is applied. So kinetic will be converted to thermal energy. Therefore, the contact surface between the brake and the moving object usually increases in temperature. 
So this is what we are going to have. Brakes have frictional and wear material on the contact surfaces to create friction for braking. They are divided into shoe brakes and head brakes. All right, so these are the ones that are being listed here. Uh, just for the basics of your understanding, guys, if you want to uh, learn more, go through that part and uh, understand the basics of what you're given. So what you're going to do actually in our next classes or in our next class is to focus on the bend brakes. So I'm going to have an introduction again of the bend brakes uh, as a separate part uh, what you need to understand on bend brakes, the formulas. Uh, I'm just going to try to list the formulas that I can. Because like I said, guys, go back and revise your N4. So yes, I'm going to take those formulas from N4, bring them to you so that uh, uh, in terms of time, some of you guys, now you'll be going to work. You just need your formulas on the table. So we shall try that one in our next class to list the formulas and what you need to understand in terms of the brakes, which is the bend brakes, and do questions after that uh, so that you as an individual, you can be able to answer question papers. If there is any question paper that you are not able to answer after that, let me know so that we can work on that together. So that is it, guys. Uh, till we meet again.